this is what we used to execute. And you can see I have one test case that passed because it went in and it registered successfully. And I have one test case that failed because this opened the application and I ran a sample fail function that was looking for properties that I know don't exist. So it was definitely meant to fail. And you guys can see this is the test cases sheet and this is what it reflects. And now let's look at the test steps. In the test steps sheet, you can see step by step what happened. Opening home page and all of this stuff had passed. Here's my input parameters that I used. And you can see my test ran in Firefox. And here's the username and the password that it created. It output those to here along with XML. It's just how I wanted to do it. And this test case, well, it failed because it was looking for properties that don't exist. So what happened was it ran through one step which passed, makes sense, open home page, should pass just like this one because it's the same exact function reused two times. But this step failed because it was looking for a function property that doesn't exist. And we can even look at the screenshots, guys. Let's check out these screenshots. So you guys see I have two screenshots failed failures okay I open them up and you can see that it's still at this page the screenshot doesn't show too much because the object doesn't exist right so if it doesn't exist I can't really take a screenshot of it but what you can, guys can also see is a screenshot of my print log and my print log shows that I try to execute a function called click link and using a property called name this should fail Obviously, I made that up, and it shouldn't exist. And so it waited for 10 seconds, and then it failed. Same thing here. We have this other function, get image, looking for the same thing. It wasn't found. Waited for 10 seconds. It failed. And I even include a print log. Print log is test analysis data, which we'll go to in the next section. But so what would happen after all of this? My text execution report, all of this would get copied and I would probably email it. It would all be automatic guys. It, I would just do this kind of thing and paste it into Outlook and email it to whoever needs it emailed. right? Or I can just leave it as is if it's for my own purposes. And then the people will get this test execution report and they will look at the results. They'll see, oh man, why did this fail? Oh, okay, it's kind of a negative scenario. It's supposed to fail. That's a good sign. But let's say it failed because something has changed. Then they'll go look at my screenshots that I attached and they'll realize, oh, okay, something's broken in the application. Let's go fix it. This guy can keep sleeping. We don't have to bother him. That's the test analysis report. Okay, and finally, we get to the test analysis data, which is probably for an automation engineer, this is probably the most important part for you guys. If you don't create important, relevant, very detailed test analysis data, you guys will have a nightmare trying to debug your scripts. So let's open up that image. This is the test analysis data. This is pretty much just for automation engineers or anyone that's going to be analyzing the results. Sometimes you may get to a level where manual testers are analyzing your results. And if they know that all the results are located in this run folder, do you think they can easily figure out what went wrong? If they opened up my spreadsheet and they looked at the test steps and they looked why this failed, I think they can pretty easily figure out what happened, right? Because this step says that I was showing what happens when there are failures. And what happens when there are failures is things fail. So then they can go look at the screenshots. If that's still not clear, I even give them a print log or even to myself. And they can go to the bottom. They can see that here, when I executed a function called click link, looking for this description of the object, it counted to 10, 
it waited for 10 and then it failed look you can see click link failed after waiting for 10 seconds so there's one failure then here's a function called get image trying to get this property waited for 10 seconds the image wasn't there it failed again and that's it there's this contains so much analysis that when I need to analyze the results because sometimes guys let's be honest failures are our fault failures are an automation engineers fault sometimes because really we are developers that are testing developers so we also have to code we create code and there's bugs I always have bugs in my code I'm not gonna lie I'm not gonna deny it the best thing to do is to have good reporting practices so that it, it makes your debugging life much easier if you can debug very easy then you'll be much more efficient you'll fix your bugs faster and your scripts will be that much more reliable and that's why I have such a detailed print log it tells me everything that I need to know function by function what happened what passed what failed and so on and so forth okay so now that you guys got every single layer I want to do one more run for you guys just so you can see in real time again what happens because I'm sure it went so quick and you guys were very confused but now that you at least know what's going on we can run it again and see what happens I'm going to close this I'm going to configure the config file for you guys to see a run so this is what I would do if I wanted to execute this by the way you can get a lot more complex I usually create a framework that will automatically go in and change these execution flags but for your purposes just beginning starting off let's keep it very simple if I want to run this test case I'll put a Y here and all the other ones I'll put a no and now only this one is going to execute I'm going to save this and keep in mind anybody can do this whether manual testers or you or management all they have to do is come in here put a Y to what they want to execute and then they have to run it and running it is also simple because you create a startup script which is right here and all I have to do is double click it okay but yeah I'll just double click it and you guys will see so again give it a second and you guys will see it will open up QTP it will perform that one test case it will do all the reporting capture all the screenshots and it's that simple once developed guys a framework that's the beauty of it it, it takes a long time to develop a great framework may take six months to develop if it's highly detailed you know if you have to report to a lot of different people I've had to report separate results to management I've had to report separate results to operations and development team separate results to manual testing team so that all becomes pretty complex but once developed you can reuse it over and over you can you can even take it to different jobs and use it there piece of cake just because you've developed everything once the important part is that you just do it right the first time so you guys can see that everything is passed if we go into our folder of the script we'll see the run the latest run here at 1115 and we'll see our results and our print log and our results should say that everything passed which it did open application pass our test steps four passes makes sense and that's what would happen okay so now let's get to the Q and A I know this was very fast guys can you believe it that it's already been almost an hour but that's all I can cover in one hour as you guys can see frameworks are extremely complicated there's a lot of moving pieces and it will take time to develop everything but just stick with us we'll explain you the whole framework from A to Z over time and we'll keep everybody updated as we're making development with those videos so if I may just ask that everybody just type your question into the chat box 
opening up the the audio is maybe very bad because sometimes there's very bad connections a lot of background noise so we're just gonna keep it to the chat box I will go through each question one by one I'll read it out loud I'll answer it for you guys and if you have any more we are always here admin at qtptutorial.net feel free to send us an email or you know you guys know we're on YouTube we're on Facebook okay first question yeah this is a good question I didn't really cover this they asked what is this framework called well this framework is called a keyword driven framework that's correct why is this a keyword driven framework because as you guys saw in my test steps it's driven by a keyword a keyword is linked to a function that it executes and that's it personally I highly recommend either keyword driven framework or a hybrid framework that's pretty much it oh, that's really all you need to stick to and it will make your life very easy everywhere keyword driven framework is good when you want to create a few test cases like smoke tests and such hybrid framework is perfect when you want to data drive everything and hybrid framework is just an overall encompassing framework if you want to have everything in one place in one framework you just go with the hybrid approach if you know you're going to be data driving things go for the hybrid framework it's, it's a little bit different over JavaScript than I have it's a little bit more complex because it requires also for me to be able to navigate through every single sheet every single row and be able to find the right piece of data to use but it's probably my favorite but yes this one is called keyword driven framework uh, yeah these notes we will probably make them available at some point guys okay sorry just reading through all the questions and guys if you're worried that you missed a lot of information and you weren't quick enough in taking notes I know I presented a lot don't worry all you have to do is go to qtptutorial.net slash webinar replay and you guys will get to see this webinar there over and over again as often as you want give us a little bit of time we may go in and do a few edits just to make it more friendly more viewer friendly remove you know any kind of unnecessary data and such but yeah we'll let you know when this comes out and all you have to do is go there and you can watch this webinar over again okay ah uh, yes yes I like I said we will upload this to website and YouTube webinar replay maybe a few hours maybe to a few days depending on how busy you are but we'll let everybody here know that attended the webinar of how you guys can view this okay don't worry we'll give it to you somebody asked me I don't want to call out names just in case uh, somebody feels upset by it so I'm just gonna keep this anonymous but somebody asked me whether we can use different Excel sheets for different test cases can you please explain to me a little bit more what you mean by this question I'm kind of unclear um I got another question did you use object repository in your keyword driven framework or did I handle it with descriptive programming and this is a very very popular topic amongst automation engineers they love to discuss this kind of stuff 